Hey, this is John with Two Moose Home Inspections. Welcome to Inspector Insights. We're now at part number nine of learning about your well. All right, we just learned about some solutions that can take place, such as adding water storage uh, if you have a well that has failed and isn't producing enough water for your family. But let's talk about how that is, why that is, and how it is that we test. So the important thing is that we have a two hour long test where we stress test this well. And what we're going to do is we're going to just use a normal uh, faucet, normal tap, uh, or we're going to connect in a normal way. So if, if we take a look here, what we will oftentimes do is connect right here at the source. And so that way we don't have any issues with anything else that's going on in the house. We'll normally connect right here at the source. If not, then what we might do is that we might connect ourselves um, to a sink that has a threaded adapter. So like a sink like this that has a threaded adapter. Or what we'd like to do is if we have a hose connection on the outside of the house, then we'll connect there. Now, I can already hear, John, there are half inch pipes, three quarter inch pipes. It's all this you know, difference in flow. And so if you have this restriction going through, okay, I get where you're coming from. Totally understand it. But what we're looking at is the practical application of how to test a well. And so what does, what, does that, what does that even mean, a practical application of how to test a well? Well, we can go into theory and we can go into you know, a whole bunch of data and information and whatever. But at the end of the day, if theoretically your car can go zero to 60 in two seconds, but in reality you have traffic uh, in the place that you live and you'll never be able to get to those speeds that quickly, well, then what that means is that the theory doesn't matter because you're always stuck in traffic. So it doesn't matter how good your sports car is if you're always stuck in traffic. So is it nice to know that you have a sports car? Yes, it's so good to know that you have a sports car. But the thing is, is that knowing you have a sports car and being able to use the performance of a sports car, are two different things. So we're trying to tell you whether or not your well is giving you the performance of a sports car or if it is a sports car that has a lot of traffic restrictions. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and just take a look at a few things here. So first and foremost, we have, as we know, we have this pump. And so this pump right here uh, has a lot of scribbles on it because we had a lot of other things that we talked about in the previous episodes, but this also helps illustrate how that pump works. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that we may have water coming into this area. And so, uh, well, we do, because this is a water table. So what we have going on is that we might have a lot of water coming right here from this tributary. And so, so this one right here, as it turns out, is able to produce uh, two gallons per minute. Okay, so boom, we got two gallons per minute coming in from here. But then over here, we have this little itty bitty one that is producing, I don't know, let's just say 0 0.5 uh, gallons per minute. All right. And then what we have is that we have maybe something else that is coming in um, and it is producing and it's kind of like a medium one. And this is going to be producing a little bit of water here and that water let's just say is going to be 2.5 gallons and then so that'll just give us a nice number to work with so we now have ourselves uh, 2.5 gallons per minute and so all these tributaries are coming in now the thing that i want you to keep in mind is that if you've ever had um a milkshake oh milkshakes are the best so you take your straw you put it in the milkshake and you suck on the straw and if you suck too quickly the milkshake cannot come back around the straw fast enough and you end up sucking up air so same thing happens here. If the sources of water that are coming to your house are not fast enough, do not have enough gallon per minute refresh rate, then basically what is happening is that you have a straw inside of a milkshake and some milkshakes are really frozen and some milkshakes are kind of warmed up and you get to the straw much faster. So whenever you're sucking on that milkshake, how much of that water can I actually get up and in? That's the important thing. Because if I have a glass of water and I put a straw in there, I limitless, I can do as much water as I want because that water is very fluid. And so what we're talking about is in our water table, in the area that we find ourselves, how much water is coming into this well? And so our test, I don't really care how much water is coming into the well because let's also take a look at this. Let's say that I have another one and this, this one is a monster and it is bringing in a ton of water. This, this right here, this is impressive because what we have going on is that we have another seven gallons per minute. So if we add all of this up right here, then we know that we have seven gallons plus two plus 2.5 plus five. That means that we have the ability to bring in 12 gallons per minute. That's amazing. Okay, but maybe, maybe this particular pump, instead of being able to produce 12 gallons per minute, this particular pump can only do two gallons per minute or can only do five gallons per minute, or maybe it's broken and it can only do half a gallon per minute. So it doesn't matter theoretically 
how much water can come back into this pipe. What matters is what am I actually getting? And so then what happens is that we start to run the water for that two hour period of time and we are running that water and it's coming out and we are basically at that point over here measuring how much water is coming out. And so whenever we are measuring how much water is coming out after the two hour test, let's say that it makes it. And after a two hour long test, uh, we come out and we have three gallons per minute. I would consider three gallons per minute as the bare minimum um, that we could be at. And so then what else would we have? Well, if we had maybe two gallons per minute, well, that's not really as good, but that's still manageable. So then whenever we are really gonna have a problem is one gallon per minute. That's whenever we aren't, like our shower head that is a high efficiency shower head is 1.5 gallons per minute. You are not gonna enjoy your shower. And there's not gonna be enough water for multiple people to take showers necessarily, and to also run other things around the house. Now, the maximum that we could get to would be something like um, you know 15 gallons per minute. And that is kind of like the top number of what is possible. But the reality is three gallons and above, you're doing great. And that's all you need to worry about. So we've now run the test for two hours and we've gotten that three gallons and above, and that is fantastic. So this is a test that has passed. And that is how our system works to test if a system pass. So on the next one, we're going to learn how do we test if it fails? How do we know if it failed? And then how do the other tests that other people do work and why do they not really matter?